Hello and welcome to this talk about the Julia Package Dr. Watson. My name is George Tacheris and along with uh, Thomas, Jonas, Sebastian and other contributors we maintain this package. So let's start with why this package exists and it exists to address common scientific uh, difficulties and problems. For example, scientists typically want to include the value of parameters they used in a simulation to the output file of the simulation. And you can do this with string interpolation, but it quickly becomes tedious. Another common problem is that when a colleague gives you their project and you try to run it, but none of the scripts work. And you want to, a, a way that guarantees that when you share a project, everything just works. Lastly, science cares about data provenance and um, reproducibility. So you would like to have a way that automatically integrates Git information into all the saved data from your project. So we believe that all of these things and many more should and can be simple and easy. So Dr. Watson is a scientific project assistant software. It helps people manage their scientific projects or any project for this matter and it eliminates such common problems. And Julia is really the, the language that uh, allows such a package to exist because it provides an awesome package manager, multiple dispatch and macros, all of which we take advantage of in Dr. Watson. So in our documentation page, we have a tutorial about the scientific workflow and how Dr. Watson helps make it smoother. And this is summarized in this figure. In this talk, however, I will be handpicking a, a small subset of the functionality of Dr. Watson and uh, showcase it. So the first thing you typically want to do when you start a new scientific project is to set it up. And Dr. Watson provides a simple but well thought out uh, template for a scientific project, which you can create with the function initialize project. And this is how it looks like, and you can see it has uh, sensible folders for data, scripts, and other things. And the scientific project is also a Julia project because of the manifest and project.toml files. And it is also a Git repository. Now, any script you run in the context of your science project, you want it to be run within the project environment. And the reason you, you do this is because this guarantees that Julia uses the package versions that you want instead of the global ones. So Dr. Watson provides a simple way to activate a project, and this is the macro quick activate. So you write this at the start of every script, and when you run the script, this macro searches the folder of the script, as well as the parent folders, until it finds a project.toml file, and it activates this project. And if you give it a name as well, the macro also checks that the activated project matches the given name. Now, the second reason that you want your scripts to run within the project environment is the function project dir and the derivative functions like data dir that Dr. Watson provides. And what these functions do is that they always return the path to the folder or subfolders of the currently activated project which when used with uh, conjunction of uh, quick, quick activate is exactly the project that you want. So this establishes a, a, a local only framework for accessing file paths, which is also operating system independent. Uh, as I said in the introduction, you typically want to include parameter values into some kind of names. And you can do this with string interpolation, and then you use this name for the output files or for figure titles. And Dr. Watson provides the function save name that takes as an input any key-based uh, container, like a dictionary, and transforms it into a string that has a key equals value pairs. And it works for dictionaries or composite types or named tuples. And it is also smart in a way because it has some decisions about whether something should be output or not. For example, a vector of five random numbers by default is not included in the output string. And in addition, this function has really a, a ton of customization options for custom structs and how it should behave. Then we go into saving tools, which is a large part of Dr. Watson. And let's say that you have some data, which is a Julia dictionary and contains some results, and you are going to save this data. And you typically do this with a command save, with a, with a given name and the given data. So Dr. Watson provides the function save save, which will never overwrite or delete files. 
So if there is already a file which has, which has the same name, the function will rename the existing file by adding here a, a counter, an incremented counter, and it will save your file uh, as the original name instead. Something a bit more advanced is the tag save functionality and macro, which works as follows. When you save something with this function, Dr. Watson will automatically add to the saved dictionary some Git-related uh, entries for reproducibility. So you see here, once I load the file I save with tag save, I have the field that, that is the git, git commit, which is the current git commit, the script, which is the script that used this macro, an exact line of code that used this macro, and if my repository had uncommitted changes, the difference of the uncommitted changes would be shown in this field. All right, so let's talk a bit about reproducibility now. <clears throat> You send your entire project folder to a colleague, and your colleague will uh, use the package manager of Julia to activate the path to the project. And then they use the command instantiate. And what this does is it is installing all the packages that are necessary for them to run your project. And boom, just like that, everything that works from, for you works for them. And this happens because the Dr. Watson framework uses only relative local paths because of the project dir functions. The exact package versions are embedded within the project, and git information is embedded in saved files, typically. So let's do a head count now. How many more commands do you need to introduce to your workflow to take advantage of Dr. Watson? Well, you need two commands to just initialize the project, but they are a one-time thing. And then you need, let's say, one, two, three, three and a half commands to take advantage of what I've shown here. I do not count tag save as a full command because it simply replaces the word save with the word tag save. And that's it. So to conclude, Dr. Watson has a minimally invasive design where all functionality comes in the form of simple function calls and there is no command line or external tools or whatever. It establishes full reproducibility without a sweat it is simple to learn and use, and keep in mind that in this talk I really only touch the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with Dr. Watson. So Julian scientists seem happy with it because we have 184 stars on GitHub, and yeah, try it out, remove the frustration of managing a project, and focus on the science. Thank you.